this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we are celebrating the shortlist for Blood Rag Poet of the Year. The poets in the shortlist, half of them have sent me their poems. And again, I do this by the seat of my pants, so I'm not giving anybody any shit here. So this episode will be three of them, and since there's six shortlisted poets, hopefully there's enough time for the rest of them to get me their poems. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, let, let's uh, do a little upkeep before we get into the rest of this. There's Poetic Anarchy Press merchandise and I Hate Matt Wall merchandise. I Hate Matt Wall, the shirt. I Hate Matt Wall, the sticker. Um, the stickers are going to be up on my store. But if you make any order on my store, I'll put a sticker in for you. So there's that. Um, also out this week is um, Blood Rag issue 13 the first anniversary issue with poems from Stephen Bruce Tamara Albana Shaylin Marks, me, Adam Crawford Shane Brewster and Ethan McGuire so definitely take a look at this you could download this for free at ihatemountball.com slash the dash blood dash rag or um, you can pick up a copy of this. I will be putting this in with every order on the Etsy shop. Um, but also, if you want um, just this, I guess I'll put that up on the Etsy shop too. And then finally, after all these months, Project Broadside. Six poets, six poems, six individually signed and numbered broadsides. From Bunny Wild, Tim Johnston, me, Mindy Simonson, Thomas Crop, and Nate Colton. This is out now on my Etsy shop. Little folder. The broadsides are inside. So this is super limited. Like, there's only 10 of these. Okay? So if you want this, like shit or get off the pot motherfucker like you don't got a whole lot of time here all right um bloodshed review issue one shaylin marks mindy simonson jeff taylor it is out now and there are less than 40 copies of this left so and then the other thing i'm going to say the price for these is going to go up um as soon as i get on etsy and change it so um if you want these for this super low introductory price, get your ass over to the Etsy shop and pick that up. Um, I'll show the podcast viewers um, issue two next episode. And again, winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry is up now on my shop. Get it. 125 copies signed. And I think that is all. Let's get on with stuff. Um, I announced the short list for the Blood Rag Poet of the Year. Oh, it was on July 1st. Okay. And so that was super cool. The response I got from that was just not. I just appreciate everybody who took part. The poets who have sent stuff into the Blood Rag at like... You guys were just fucking awesome. So let me get into some of this here. I guess I should tell you what the shortlist is. So the shortlist for the blood rag, paw out of the air. And the winner will be announced on Sunday, July 8th, okay? During my um, weekend live stream at noon Pacific on my YouTube channel. Shortlist is Rich Boucher, Robert Fleming, Shaylin Marks, Matthew Buckley Smith, Jeff Taylor, and Bunny Wild. Those are the poets who were voted on by their peers in the rag and by their readers. It's pretty fucking crazy, dude. It's pretty cool. Way more votes than I thought I'd get. 
I don't know. Like, if I would have known I would have got as many votes as I got, I would have set up some fucking Google form or fucking survey monkey or some fucking shit. But, yeah, like, I got a lot of votes. So, let's get over here and find out about some of these poets. This is a little bio of... Robert Fleming. Robert Fleming is out of Delaware. Um, he's been published in the United States, Canada, England, Ireland, and Australia. He is a member of the Rehoboth Beach. No idea if that was pronounced correctly, sorry. And the Horror Writers Association. For awards that he has won, he was the 2022 San Gabriel Valley CA1 poem the 2021 best of mad swirl poetry and then for nominations two push cart prizes and best of the net robert fleming a writer and graphic artist from lewis delaware united states published in the blood rag issue number 10 april 2023, the Red Cross ran out of blood. Transfusion experiment number 001, eggnog. A mouse turns into an elm log. Transfusion experiment number 003, Jim Bean. A moose turns into a mariachi machine. Transfusion experiment number 005, Elmer's glue. A lion turns into a tap shoe. Transfusion experiment number 047, maple syrup. A monkey keeps on hiccuping. Transfusion experiment number 123. Elderberry syrup. A man turns into a saddle stirrup. Like one of the things I like about Robert is how weird and strange Robert is. And I seriously like... Please believe me when I say I do not mean that in a rude or derogatory way. Like, I gravitate and feel like a kinship with people who seem a little on the strange side, if that makes any sense. He is, as I've heard him describe it, and like this could be something he changes all the time. Like, okay, I don't know. Like, when I first heard him read... He described himself as a word artist. Published in the Blood Rag, issue number nine, March 2023. Fuck me, marry me, love me, love my curses. Cunt, cock, crap, asshole, shit, tit. Fuck me, marry me. When he would do his readings, he would have like visuals. And there were, there was this one dude. And I could be completely remembering this wrong. So I apologize if I'm remembering this wrong. But it was at this um, open mic poetry reading. Like everyone's going up there and like reading their poems. And then he goes up there uses like a PowerPoint thing and it was like just images of a letter or a postcard that he envisioned that somebody would have written like a long time ago or something like that. I can't remember and I'm fucking this whole bit up. Robert, I am so sorry. I'm fucking butchering this right now. But anyway, it, it was really interesting. Like just as an artist, it was really, really interesting. And his stuff is just so out there and so not what other people are doing that the uniqueness of Robert 
is what made me like when I read his poems, I'm like, oh my God, like I got to put these in the blood rag. They are just so unique. There's a lot to be said with finding your voice. And I think the thing, and I'm, this is not to throw shade at anyone who was nominated for Poet of the Year and didn't make the short list. But the people who did make the short list, I really feel their voices are fucking distinct as shit. You start reading their poems and you're like, ah, yes, this is so-and-so. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is clear who these people are. Robert is a super unique individual and has a lot of rabid fucking fans. So, um, obviously... He does, for real. Published in the Blood Rag, issue number eight, February 2023. Six-word flash fiction. Madam Chopstick Walker trips on Kabuki. Melt Marilyn Monroe into a pizza. The hungry poisoner fed a pear. Praying the tea will be strong. I unbrick to Annabelle Lee's silence. Five bullets left in the barrel. My vocal cords speak for silence. And Robert, good luck to you. Cool, 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 cool. Now, um, next on the list, we have um, Bunny Wild. Bunny Wild! Old dicks. Sugar sweat. Whiskey sour breath. Purple hickeys on my neck. Creep Dave pushed my head down between his legs. Too young for rough sex and a last cigarette. So I staggered out of the car, gulping half a fifth, squinted bloodshot eyes at cartoons, 20-something dude's taste on my smeared pink lips. Girlfriend called crying about her married boyfriend. He had to be 36. One of a long line of losers to spread her legs. We were girls and they were men. Had the hot cars, money, and drugs, fucking in their wives' beds. Creep Dave got us high, snuck us into a movie with his stick-shaped friend. So we went to school with his little brother in the same class. He was a boy and we had no cherries, just ass and tits. Shithole full of jail bait. They like him young there in the sticks. Now, the thing with Bunny, I don't know how else to get into this. Like, if anyone has listened to this podcast for any length of time or is familiar with Bunny at all you already know all this story just in case there's like one person listening who doesn't know what the fuck i'm talking about bunny has been involved in poetic anarchy since poetic anarchy started bunny was my first sign up for doing it bunny came around like i first had my first interaction with bunny during the weird mask days um when we would do weird mask races and if you don't know what a weird mask race is it's basically like it's kind of like how i do my poetry workshops i give um little words and prompts and then um you have to write something as fast as you can and the winner gets something so we would do like the weird mask 500 and it would be like a 500 word piece or the Weird Mask 5K, like it was like a 5K run, but it's like you have to write 5,000 words as fast as you can, and the first one done wins kind of shit. I should probably do that again, actually. I've seen Bunny, Bunny's work since fucking day one, and Bunny came out of the gate amazing, came out of the gate with voice. Like, Bunny is a natural fucking talent. Feed me. You're laying down under blankets of tongues, in between rows of snapping teeth. 
letting the hungry feed if you stay with me. And though my guilt gives you a bitter taste, I'm starved for blood and I won't let you leave. If you ever wanted to read her early shit, like the first shit she ever wrote, as far as I know, get the Poetic Anarchy Volume 1 collection. And that's stuff from the first workshop, the first Poetic Anarchy workshop I did. It just blew me away. Completely blew me away. As far as Bunny goes, Bunny's been in uh, Poetic Anarchy Volume 1, 2, and 3. Um, last spring, not the one that just happened, but the one before that, I put out um, an ebook of Bunny's poetry called The Monsters in the Mouth. And then last fall, I put out her chapbook, Potato Manifesto. This last spring, the split um, Let Us Bleed. And Bunny's in the upcoming uh, Bloodshed review. Don't eat the bananas. I wanted to bring you home, make you mine, peel you open, roll you on my tongue, swallow what's under that skin. But the swarm had come, whispering death down onto your yellow fingers. So I walk on by as the flies take you. You can rot for someone else. It's kind of strange because I'm just super proud of Bunny and think the world of her and her work like I'm just like waiting for everyone else to get on board the bunny train you know it's gonna happen and there are a few other poets like that in the like anarchy crew group of people I just I'm I'm super proud of bunny I know I know little but enough to dance if the sky falls laugh if the rain never comes Smile when there is nothing left to lose. I know enough to write when my soul calls out for the pen and to let myself die a page at a time. So Bunny has been in, I think, five issues of the Blood Rag. So Bunny was in the very first Blood Rag from July of last year, was in issue two, which would be the August issue of last year, was in the fourth issue, October, and then was in issue 11 and issue 12. So that would be um, June and May. That was ridiculous. What the fuck am I doing? Mr. Killhappy, you would set me on fire for a little more light. Take out my eyes so I can't see who's on your mind. Put the gun in my hand after shooting me down. I would have let you if you hadn't run to the one with the pretty young face. I heard she found the way out. Who are you killing now? Bunny, I'm super proud of you. You fucking deserve it. Bunny's the most like humble and self-deprecating person in the fucking world. I don't know. I just, I can't wait for the day when Bunny realizes how good she is. That's going to fucking blow my fucking mind when that happens. Oh, and I didn't even give you like the little bio there. So, Bunny is originally from Michigan, I think. Um, Midwest, but I think Michigan. Moved to Germany, I think like six or seven years ago. And um, has been living in Germany for the last however many fucking years. I guess I just said. Man's mother. The cruelest part of me is almost sad that she's never going to die. She will be stepping over all of our remains at the end of days, barking at the mutants that ate us alive. She will lead them with a strong arm, a judging eye. And while our spirits howl from the ashes, stripped of humanity, she will sleep like a baby in the cold night. So Bunny, good luck and congratulations for making the short list. Finally, this episode, we have Rich Boucher. Land of the Fire. If anyone's a philosopher right now and actually getting paid for it, they better understand that this country, this U.S., began oozing pus almost immediately, mere minutes after it all began. But no one will cop to smelling the stink. No one will do a damn thing, but here's the sick and engorged pink truth of it all. In the dank, 
German fetish club smelling of leather, cigars, and pee that is the foundering remains of our democracy, it's up to each and every one of us to be the real and true Lysol, the necessary alcohol wipe. Now, Rich Boucher is, like with Robert and like with Bunny, Rich Boucher is his own type of weird. The human cost of Doritos. A man in the convenience store asks me if I have a dollar. Normally, I'd forgive this rudeness, do the right thing and let him have that extra wrinkled up buck in my pocket. But here's the thing. When I saw the purple and green, sexually available, lusciously curved bag of flaming hot Doritos on the shelf near the lighters and bottles of wake-up juice, something came over me. That stranger would have to go hungry. I knew that much. I hate when people compare me to other poets or other writers, especially when I'm not a huge fan of those writers. So I don't know how Rich is going to feel when I compare him to the writers I'm going to compare him to. It's just fascinating. Like, he reminds me if, like, Thomas Ligotti and William S. Burroughs got together and started fucking writing poetry together. We watched a film strip in the second grade, and it was about how to use the telephone, how to not be scared of the telephone, and the film had characters dressed like the numbers and letters on the dial. There was an exclamation point man who hurt himself, fooling around with a giant hook on the massive rotary dial in the center of the floor. He cried so loud, like a baby. The room all this was in was supposed to represent the jack that goes into the phone socket on the wall. His costume was a yellow foam exclamation point, and after the film strip, I became a little boy who was terrified by rotary phones and crying men shaped like exclamation points. He feels like he has that like natural evolution of the weird from the mundane. So like you have your like your weird fiction guys, like your your Lovecraft circle from back in the day, the weird tales days. And I feel like whether it's been acknowledged or not, I feel like like William S. Burroughs was kind of heavily influenced by a lot of stuff that was happening with the weird fiction the weird fictioneers and that turned into what people have dubbed the new weird although some of the new weird isn't very good or it's just weird to be weird and a lot of my fiction and a lot of my poetry that isn't very confessional i guess is the best way to say it has weird elements but i think the difference here is between like where me, Rich Boucher, Thomas Ligotti, um, and a few others stand apart from what like weird fiction is, is that the weird we talk about doesn't seem weird to us when we're talking about it. When we talk about these things, when we write about these things, it is, this is what life is. And if you find this bizarre or otherworldly, that's what's weird about this. Romance. When we finally meet in the greasy, 24-hour diner on a cloudy night at 1 a.m., with the smell of burning sugar in the air and the moon throbbing right over our booth, after all these months of iridescent, livid sexting, it turns out that you have an extra eye that you never told me about, situated high on your inner thigh. Later on, in bed, I could tell by the look in your additional eye that you loved what I was doing, that you were getting so close. My eyes met yours.
and you'll hear some of Rich's poems that were in the blood rag. A lot of these, like the poem about the film strip, I remember watching film strips, you know? I remember having irrational fears of things. You could even hear it in his voice when he reads it. It's like, this is normal. Now, this is a thing. Rich takes the absurdity, nonsensical nature of society and our everyday lives and gives them to you in bite-sized fucking poems for you to digest them. And Rich is going to be in the next um, Bloodshed review. In the review, he has probably his strongest poem that I've ever read or heard him read or anything like that. So I cannot wait to share that with you guys. But, um, oh yeah, and, and Rich is out of New Mexico, I think. I don't think he's from New Mexico originally. Somewhere in the continental U.S., um, but I think right now um, he's out of New Mexico. But um, just brilliant, brilliant, dark, makes you feel like you got a little violated, but it was so weird that you don't know if you did or not. He's seriously like one of my favorite poets right now. So Old enough to remember being that young. Abandoned pizza slices stain the sidewalk, just a block from the man selling baby crib mobiles he makes from discarded light bulbs and forgotten memes that feed on insecurities. When I finally get to die, all you people better cry about me as though you get paid for it. Who among you could be the candle I'll light to bathe every dead loved one I've lost in shadows so thick all heaven's hymns could get swallowed up and never heard? Tell you what, the first job I ever had, I was only 15. On my break, I'd sneak a high society magazine into the upstairs bathroom, jacking to Trinity Loren like it was the only way to stop tomorrow. So, Rich, again, dude, super stoked to be working with you, and congrats on making the shortlist, brother, and good luck, dude. So, um, yeah, I guess that is this little episode here. And um, as soon as I get the other readings from the other three poets, Jeff Shalin and Matthew Buckley Smith, I'll do another one of these little um, fun jaunts for you here. So let's get into um, Plugs Zebut. Okay, so I want to give a big thank you to all the you motherfuckers on Patreon who helped put this show together. Michael, Cedar, Harry, you guys are awesome. And then a thank you to you beautiful motherfuckers on the YouTube. Thank you, crew. I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, and to Julia. You guys are appreciated. And then over there in the Anarchy crew, I want to give a big thank you too. Bunny to Nate to Mindy to Thomas to Tim J to Shaylin to Tim G to Chill Baby to Tamara to Adam to Chase to JH and to Jess. You guys are fucking awesome. And then the biggest <laughs> thank you goes over to the number one chappy in the chat book in the month club. Caitlin, thank you. You're the shit. I appreciate you. And if you guys want to join the Anarchy Crew um, or the Chat Book of the Month Club, get on over to the YouTubes. Click join under any of my videos or on my YouTube page at youtube.com slash at Matt Wall. And you could get, uh, can I say hundreds? I might be able to say hundreds now. There are hundreds of members only videos on there, including workshops, including uh, Bukowski Book Club, the weekly things of that, which I actually need to make some videos for, um, live streams, and then also, oh yeah, so the members only live streams on Fridays, and, and also the um, members only um, Zoom uh, writing workshops. Um, that we do every week. So get on over there and do that. And if you're a badass like Caitlin, you join and you get all that. Plus you get my chat books every month. So there's that. So um, the episodes I'm going to be doing with Andrew from the Heavy Board Podcast. We talked for three hours. So I'm like, oh, 
So I'm assuming that there's going to be roughly three episodes worth of stuff. I'll probably be sprinkling those out for this month, every other episode or something like that. So we'll see. So the next episode is either going to be another short list episode or it might be some heavy board with Andrew. Um, you never know. You never know. All right, guys. So if you like this, this was fun. Um, like and sub, do the whole fucking thing. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. Left hand, oh my God. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.